I've been a rock climber since I was 20 years old. I've been doing this job, teaching anatomy and getting paid for it for about 19 years. I've been making these videos for seven years. Can you believe I haven't talked about the pulleys in the fingers that strap down the flexor tendons? Let's have a look at that anatomy now. We can generate really high flexion forces through our fingers. We've got a powerful grip. And as a rock climber, I know this because I can lift up my entire body weight with the tips of my fingers and climb on tiny edges and things like that, right? So what we have here is uh, in the forearm, we have room for bulky muscles that can generate force and power and they can change their length and they transmit those forces to the digits, to the fingers, through tendons. In fact, there are two layers of muscle here and we're talking about flexing the digits. So we, has, we have a superficial layer, flexor digitorum superficialis, and we have a deep layer, flexor digitorum profundus. So we have two layers of tendons running through the wrist, through the palm, and through the fingers, to the middle phalanges and the tips, the distal phalanges, to generate that finger flexion. So that's part of the solution, but um, if we've got these tendons pulling on these long bones and these joints, we're going to need to keep the tendons tied down to the bone, otherwise as we flex, the tendon is going to want to run across the joint, right? Which would reduce dexterity and, you know, cause all sorts of problems. So we find a number of connective tissues. In fact, at the wrist, we have this here. We have the flexor retinaculum. All these tendons run deep to that with the median nerve. Just a side note, because uh, carpal tunnel uh, problems compress the median nerve. I love chucking in a bit of extra anatomy when I don't need to, sorry. Um, so we have the uh, transverse carpal ligament or the flexor retinaculum that ties down those flexor tendons at the wrist. So when we flex the wrist, everything's tied down, right? And then in the palm, we have a flat tendon called the palmar aponeurosis. Uh, and that is really tied to a number of tissues. So that's also helping tie down the tendons and protect the structures in here. And then we get to the fingers. And when we get to the fingers, we get to the things we call the pulleys. So you imagine a rope running through a pulley. That's what these connective tissue structures are doing. They're acting as pulleys that these rope-like tendons run around. Sure, they're in a straight line like this, but when we flex, they're running around the pulleys, running around a curve. And they've got an interesting organization, which again works to be strong enough to withstand and to withhold and maintain all those forces, but also give flexibility uh, to this dexterity. So we've got some small joints and some small bones here. If I grab this model, which isn't so heavy as it's easier to hold, um, there's that palmar aponeurosis that I was talking about this flat tendon sheet. And you can see actually, you can see this transverse ligament here helping tie everything together. You can imagine how that ties everything down. Uh, we'll come back to the connective tissues and those pulleys in a moment, but there is another bit of relevant anatomy to talk about. Um, this is a lovely, smooth, friction-free movement. Feels great, right? Um, the tendons are surrounded by a synovial capsule. So a synovial capsule is the sort of thing we see in, in the joints that move a lot, the synovial joints. Um, that is that the tendon is covered by one layer of synovial membrane. That synovial membrane kind of loops around and then comes back and it lines the inside of a connective tissue tunnel, essentially made by these pulleys. And then in between those two layers of synovial membrane, we have a little bit of fluid, synovial fluid, which means that this is a lovely friction-free smooth movement. So these pulleys here in the fingers, one of their functions is 
being part of that connective tissue tunnel, making that connective tissue tunnel, supporting those synovial structures. All right. This model shows kind of different depths of dissection. You can see the tendons running into the fingers and it's on this finger here that you can see the pulleys. Now, the connective tissue pulleys here, um, they're like uh, ligaments running from bone to bone. These are really, really strong. Uh, by all accounts, they're way stronger than they need to be, and yet they still get damaged by rock climbers, usually competitive or, or climbers that are really pushing their grade, like most connective tissues, because of overuse or very, very high loads, very, very high forces. And their aim is then to tie down the tendons uh, and prevent them from what we call bowstringing, you know, running across the joint like a bowstring. Um, and there are two types of pulleys here. There are annular pulleys. Now, annular means it makes a ring, and annulus is a ring. And there are cruciform or cruciate pulleys. And cruciform means that they are cross-shaped. So we have them running across. Now, if you imagine you've got two ligaments running obliquely and crossing each other to make a cross, if you only had one of those parts of the cruciate or cruciform ligament, you would have an oblique pulley, all right? So cruciform pulleys and annular pulleys. Each finger has five annular pulleys, which we name A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5, and three cruciform pulleys, which we name C1, C2, and C3. Um, now A1, so, okay, when I'm just, so this is, uh, this joint here, this is the, um, the joint where the, between the metacarpal bone and the proximal phalanx. This is the metacarpophalangeal joint here. It's a synovial joint. It's covered in a synovial capsule. On the palmar side, that has a thickening. So it's reinforced by a palmar plate. It's like another ligament. It's like a thickening of the synovial capsule. All these bones, these metacarpal bones are tied together by a transverse palmar ligament or a deep transverse metacarpal ligament. Um, and these tendons are running over, they're running anteriorly to that palmar plate. So that A1 pulley is running from the palmar plate around the tendons and back to the palmar plate, making that first annular ring. So that's the A1 pulley, and it's quite, it's quite a thin one. So I find it at the level of that metacarpophalangeal joint. Here, that one looks a little bit high. So the A1 pulley is here, and then usually I see a little gap, and then we see the A2 pulley. And the A2 pulley is probably the most important biomechanical pulley in the finger. It's much longer. I think the other model shows it better. Here we go, this is the full arm model, right? Um, so, yeah, the A1 pulley is here. This looks much more like an A2 pulley. Um, really, really strong, much longer. It runs for much of the length of that proximal phalanx, that first finger bone. And this is running from bone around the tendons and back to the bone or periosteum if you want to be picky. Um, so that's the A2 pulley. This is the pulley that is most commonly torn and by climbers and not really many other groups of people. And then after the A2 pulley, we see our first cruciform pulley. Or oh, bear in mind, you might see some oblique fibers in the A2 pulley. It's just that strong. It's an annular pulley, but it sometimes has some oblique fibers in there, which is really, really tough. But these, after the A2 pulley, so as we're getting to the, so this is the, proximal phalanx, then we have the distal phalanx. Sorry, we have the proximal phalanx, then the middle phalanx, and the distal phalanx. Those are the three bones in your finger, right? So we have a proximal interphalangeal joint and a distal interphalangeal joint. That A2 pulley is covering, is running for much of the length of that proximal phalanx, that first bone, and then it becomes, then you, well, then you see uh, the first cruciform pulley so the C1 pulley, and then look, there's the A3 pulley. It's a narrow band, and it's a narrow band at the joint. So at that um, proximal interphalangeal joint, and we have the C1 and C2 
pulleys on either side. And those, those cruciform pulleys or those cruciate pulleys, they are reinforcing that synovial tunnel, that uh, fibrous, that uh, flexor digital sheath that I was talking about, but they also stop it from collapsing. That's the idea there. Uh, and having a cruciform pulley and then a thin annular pulley and then a cruciform pulley means that um, at the joint means that you keep that, that dexterity at the joint, but it's also strong and reinforced. And then the next pulley seems, seems to be missing on this one. Now we're into the middle phalanx, the middle phalangeal bone. Um, after that C2 um, pulley, we then have the A4 pulley, which is the other biomechanically really important um, pulley in the finger. So A4 is covering over the tendons in the middle of the middle interphalangeal, uh, the middle phalangeal bone here. And remember that flexor digitorum superficialis is going to insert here. That's what we're seeing on this side. So that flexor digitorum superficialis tendon ends here. It inserts into the middle phalanx and then it splits and allows the flexor digitorum profundus tendon to continue to the distal phalanx. So here we see the A4 pulley tying that down. Then we see the C3 pulley and then we see the A5 pulley. It's a thin one and it's at that distal interphalangeal joint. As we get further along, as we get more distal, the structures get smaller. This anatomy has evolved to give us that combination of both strength and dexterity, flexibility. Um, what about the thumb? The thumb's only got two phalangeal bones, right? Uh, well, it's got an A1 pulley, an oblique pulley, and an A2 pulley. So we have this metacarpophalangeal joint here, just like we did with the fingers. So the A1 pulley is there, just like it is with the fingers. And then the oblique pulley is overlying these tendons in the like the proximal part of the that proximal phalanx that proximal phalangeal bone and then as we get to the distal part of the phalangeal bone then we find the the second annular pulley we find the a2 pulley uh, and these these flexor tendons in the thumb are going to insert into that into that distal phalangeal bone we don't see those pulleys on this model but that's the layout what's the clinical relevance of this anatomical knowledge well as i said um, the A2 pulley is the most commonly injured pulley. It's most commonly injured in competitive climbers or high performance rock climbers through overuse. Um, trauma tends to occur when the fingers are fl flexed, right? So like crimped, that's when a lot of load is being applied on these. You can imagine, so if the A4 pulley is over that phalanx and the A2 pulley is over that phalanx, um, yeah, so loading in a, like a crimped position, in a flexed position is when these are most likely to get injured. Uh, trigger finger. So trigger finger is caused by a nodule forming in the tendon, in the flexor tendon that is running, which, which is within that synovial tunnel, within that flexor digital sheath and uh, your finger clicks and clicks as you flex and extend. And what's happening there is the nodule is running out of the synovial tunnel underneath the A1 pulley, click. And then as it goes back under that pulley, click. You get, that's why trigger finger gives you the clicking sound. And if the finger flexes and that nodule passes deep to that A1 pulley, and then you can't extend your finger again, that's because that nodule won't pass back under the A1 pulley and go back into the fibrous digital sheath. So, there's not a lot of spare space in here. There's a lot of detail. Um, the dexterity of the hand, the, the function of the hand is really important to daily living. So this anatomy is relevant. Like I say though, it's only us climbers. I, I have injured my fingers quite a lot when I was younger. <laughs> I had a lot of these problems. I was constantly covered in climbers tape. Nowadays I've got pretty healthy fingers. I guess that's climbing for a very long period of time and encouraging all my connective tissues to get very strong very slowly because they take longer than muscles to get strong. I hope that was useful and interesting. See you next week.